Good morning from beautiful Ubud. Doesn't matter where we go and destination or no. I don't care where the motor stops. Cause when I want it, then I want it. Yeah, I want it. Oh, I want it. Let's go. We woke up at our villa in Ubud at around 7 a.m. because we really needed to have some coffee before our tour will start. We stay at Villa Sonia in Ubud, really intimate and very beautiful villa near the monkey forest. We had coffee and breakfast and our driver arrived at around 9 a.m. The ride took us about 30 minutes. After we arrived, we have seen a very big parking lot with lots, lots of spaces for cars and buses because there are tourist crowds coming from everywhere. So this is the little market here. Yeah. After you cross that big parking lot, you will see a very beautiful and well-organized traditional market. 21, 22. Uh, uh. You can find bags and everything you can find in any other Balinese market. The only difference is that the prices here can be a bit higher than in other places, especially in Ubud area. Also here, you could find sitting under a tree a man with a huge python. He's there for tourists to take photos with the snake. Because you are entering a temple, at the entrance you will be provided sarongs for both men and women. They will give you the sarongs for free and you will have to drop them off at the exit. The whole temple is very beautiful. The only problem is that you have to go down a lot of stairs to enter this peaceful and green oasis. The temple is popularly known as the Elephant Cave. It is probably one of the oldest temples on the island, being built as a sanctuary in the 9th century. The central point of the temple, the cave with the elephant head, is the one that gives its popular name. There are several figures that are carved into the stone. One of them was once thought to be an elephant, from here deriving the name. Others may think that this is actually the stone statue of the Hindu god Ganesh that gave the name. The complex contains seven statues of women holding water pitcher that represents the seven holy rivers of India. It is surrounded by forest. It also has a river crossing nearby with a little waterfall there. At some point you will see also a pool covered in water lilies. The scenery of this temple is beautiful. After we finished our visit to Goagaja, we headed directly to the wood carving village. We headed directly to a family that has a wood carving shop there. They presented us how they manufacture it and they also told us about the different types of wood that they are using. So everything is done by hand? Yes, all by hand. We don't have machine. All by hand. To all by hand. Wow. So how long a piece like this will take? Uh, start until finish about the two months. Two months for just yeah. one piece? Right, one artist, one statue. And made. this one? And this one more big size, so maybe more than one year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, but here we have a several kind of wood yeah, for wood carving. For example, in a black color, yeah, we call it an ebony wood. Yeah, we come from uh, Borneo Island. Evanos. Evanos. Yeah. <laughs> we call it Evanos. <laughs> but Evanos has many colors, like this one. Black, yeah, brown, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, and sometimes red and green. Okay, so in a brown color, we call it a uh, uh, kauba. Mahogany oh. wood. But mahogany not so heavy to carry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's really nice, the texture and how it looks. This one is uh, the best quality of sandalwood? all because, oh, yeah. you know, right. <laughs> ah. It's really expensive to yes, sandalwood? Yes, for one kilogram sandalwood, about 100,000 oh. Just the wood. Yes. That's a lot. Yes, and very difficult we get, you know. Yeah. And a yellow color, yeah, we call it a crocodile wood. Yeah, this one is a local wood. 
crocodile wood. Yes, why we call it crocodile wood? Because it's from oh. uh, the back of the tree. And this tree. is how it looks? Uh, look like crocodile skin. The tree? Yes. From wow. the tree, you know. Wow. So this is also from crocodile wood? No, this one uh, Tukalo from it's hibiscus wood. Uh, ah, hibiscus? Yes. Hibiscus. Wow. Yeah. In Bali we have to hibiscus white and green color. Yeah, like oh, this, this one is the original color from the tree, you know. Oh, this uh, like this so one, the uh, uh, street green of the wood. Uh, this one. Now two colors. Yes. And he's okay. doing something similar and with then, this one. Uh, about the process. Oh, so first the carving there, then yeah. the details here. No. Uh, so one each piece is one yeah. piece by uh, one piece is one piece. So like start until finish, you know. Uh huh. Once you start, you have to finish it. Yes. And the moment like the chain just for the paving, the paving basically here. And then for this we use the wax and the glue. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For example, something like this. So this one still the process. Yeah. From one block of wood. Yeah. yeah, and then the second process, uh, the sun is big size, still make a smoothly done. Yeah. Oh, so it's still in work, this one? Yeah. Wow. It's a long time to make. After the wood carving experience, we head directly to the Silver Village. So, at the Silver Village, I think we visited a family factory. Before you visit it, they will teach you how to manufacture from a raw piece of silver to a beautiful jewelry. The first Smith are making harmony ball. So, it's wood. So, here are the material. All the material we got from Borneo. Kalimantan is part of Indonesia, but it's not in Bali. So here is 100% um, of silver, yes. but we don't use 100% of silver because it's too soft. Therefore, they combine it with copper, 7.5 of copper, so 92.5 of silver, 7.5 of copper, and it's called sterling silver, the best quality of silver. And we combine it to make a silver block like this. Now hammering for several times and roll it with a machine, with a machine. To make it mm -hmm. Yeah, to make it flat like this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then they cut it and put in a hole and pull out to make a silver wire like this. Yeah, yeah to make proper. a design. And they yeah. put this, uh, the design one by one using the hand and it's the glue. It was made by this fruit, peeling peeling fruit. It's local mm. Okay, fruit. so it's made from a fruit? Yeah, the they just like... Smash know, it? Yep, smash it and having this texture, but it's just temporary glue okay. to make it permanent. They solder it with fire, like okay, like that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then here there are three types of silver, natural color, and then antique one and also the white one. The white one, they use this tamarind for yeah. clean it yeah. and for a uh, natural one, they polish it with that machine to make it shiny. And for the antique, like here, yeah. having um, a darker color, they put oxidized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. One by one. It's very hard work. Yeah. Yeah, too hard to do. So it, uh, its color will change after yeah. the uh, and it's color and it. Yeah. yeah, with the machine to make it shiny. Okay, for the collection, you can. Hello. Hello. Doesn't matter where we go and destination or no. I don't care where the motor stops Cause when I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it, oh, I want it, that's 